blessings. Amen. Amen. God is good. Let's look at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Good, good to see that Tammy out here. Good to see all of you out here. Let you folks know what she's been through. I have some real sad news this morning. Pillsbury, Pillsbury Doughboy died yesterday. <laughs> he, died, he died of a yeast infection. <laughs> trauma complication from repeated pokes in the belly. He was 75 years old. Doughboy was buried in a lightly greased coffin. <laughs> Dozens of celebrities turned out to pay their respects, including Mrs. Butterworth, Hungry Jack, California Raisin, Betty Crocker, the Hostess Twinkies, and Captain Crunch. <laughs> the gravesite was piled high with many flowers, F-L-O-U-R-S. <laughs> Aunt Jemima delivered the eulogy and lovingly described Doughboy as a man who never knew how much he was needed. K N E A D E. <laughs> Born and bred in Minnesota, Doughboy rose quickly in show business, but his later life was filled with leftovers. <laughs> he was not considered a very smart cookie wasting much of his dough on half-baked schemes. <laughs> Despite being a little flaky at times, he still was a crusty old man and was considered a positive role model for millions. Doughboy is survived by his wife, Plato, <laughs> three children, John Doe, Jane Doe, and Dosey Doe. <laughs> Plus, they had one in the oven. <laughs> He's also survived by his elderly father, Pop Tart. <laughs> the funeral was held at 3.50 for 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Huh? That's a good one. <laughs> and also, this is kind of sad, too. A man is ever nagging wife. I mean, she nags all the time. You know what a nagger is, don't you? <laughs> you don't? Uh -uh. <laughs> but he had a nagging wife all the time. And they went on vacation to Israel in Jerusalem. And while they were there, his wife passed away. The undertaker told the husband, you can have her buried here in the Holy Land for $150, or we can have her shipped back home for $5,000. The husband thought about it and told the undertaker he thought he would have her shipped back home. The undertaker asked him, why would you spend $5,000 to have her shipped home when you could have a beautiful barrier here, burial here, and it would only cost $150. The husband replied, long ago, over 2,000 years ago, a man died here. He was buried. In three days, he was resurrected. I just can't take that chance. <laughs> Yeah. Don't go to Jerusalem. Okay. Romans chapter 4. That's enough of that foolishness. Let's get down to business. Would you stand with us as we honor God's word? Romans chapter 4. The first four verses, we see a man that's justified by faith. And then 5 through 8, we see how we can be justified by faith. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. 
For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. Abraham believed in God. He looked forward to a time when Christ would die on the cross, just like we look back to the time when he did die. But unto him, verse 5, that worketh not, believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So we are justified by faith in Christ. And let's look at that this morning. Father, help us as we study your word together. If there's someone here that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray you'd help them see the reality and the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I read this some time ago. Niagara Falls uh, falls 160 feet. Some of you have been there. I saw it. 375 or 79,000 tons of water fall over the falls every minute. There's a Victoria Falls in Africa. It's 355 feet high, and it's twice as high as Niagara Falls. And then Angel Falls in Venezuela, the water falls 3,212 feet. It's 20 times higher than Niagara Falls. Now imagine yourself in a boat and you fall overboard and you're headed for the falls in Angel Falls in Venezuela. You're headed for the falls and you're caught up in the current. There's nothing you can do about it except go over. Well, that's kind of the way we are before we come to know Christ as our Savior. We're headed in the direction of uh, destruction, headed for sure destruction, and how in the world are we going to escape? God offers us help, but a lot of people reject that help. I heard this a long time ago, but it's, uh, it's a good illustration. This fellow fell over a cliff, and he grabbed hold of a shrub as he was falling. He's holding on for dear life. And he yelled out, help, is there anybody up there? And the story goes that God called out, this is God, I'm here. Just turn loose and I'll catch you. And there was a moment of silence and then the voice of the man calling out, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> well, that's the way people are. They're looking for something else always yeah. instead of just looking to the Lord. Mm -hmm. God has found a way to forgive us, and I'm so glad he has. Amen. His love is equal to his anger. The Bible says God's angry with the wicked every day. But God loves the wicked also. His love is equal to his anger. His mercy is equal to his justice. He's a just God. Now there's a heaven, there's a hell. If it wasn't, God wouldn't be just. Uh, he is a God of justice, but he's also a God of mercy. His forgiveness is equal to our guilt. I'm so thankful that God is a forgiving God. I'm so glad that God took my sins away and buried them in the deepest sin and forgot about it. Um, I'm so thankful that he has that ability. He hath made him to be sin for us, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. God's not expecting you to live a perfect life so you could go to heaven. God knows you're not perfect. God knows I'm not perfect. And the only perfect one was Jesus Christ. And he's the one that had to make the sacrifice for our sins, be risen from the grave, and offer us his forgiveness. God's offer of forgiveness comes with conditions. Uh, you have to ask for forgiveness. Um, his forgiveness doesn't just come automatically his forgiveness is free 
It's for everyone. But it's not an automatic thing. You have to ask for that forgiveness. I know when our son or daughter did something that they weren't supposed to do, they had to apologize for it and ask for forgiveness. And uh, that's the way it is with the Lord. We have to ask for his forgiveness. And we tell our kids, they say, we want to play. You take the trash out, then you can play. Our kids say uh, something like, um, I want to watch TV. Or you make your bed, then you can watch TV. See, God doesn't automatically forgive but he always forgives when we ask him to. Amen. I'm so thankful of that. All we have to do is ask him. And he has the ability to forgive our sin. I mean, I'm not going to ask for anybody in this room for a million dollars because I know you folks don't have it. Do you? <laughs> Are you holding out on me? Huh? Has anybody here got a million? Well, I don't think so. I know I don't. So I'm not going to ask you. If I'm in it, I'm not going to ask the Lord. Jerry Brown said he had it. Yeah. Yeah. Ask him. God does not automatically forgive. God is not obligated to forgive. He just says, if you want it, if you ask for it, I'll forgive you. I'm, I'm so thankful that he has the ability to forgive. He wants to forgive. He will forgive if we just ask him to. Oh, I'm so thankful for that. Now, God has found a way of satisfying his justice while offering us forgiveness. Justified. Do you know what the word justified means? <coughs> Just as if I had never seen it. That's amazing to me that all the sin that accumulated in my life before I got saved, and there was plenty enough of it, that all that God forgave me of that and he put me in a position as if that's not happened. It's all been forgiven. It's all been removed. And God doesn't hold that against me anymore. That's what forgiveness is. He justifies us and doesn't hold those things against us again. Never, never really hold it against us. That's, that's absolutely amazing to me. Now, what are the conditions? Just simply believe that Jesus lived that perfect life, fulfilled the law. He died on the cross, hung on the cross for six hours, paid for our sins in hell, rose from the grave, ascended to heaven. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's marvelous. That's wonderful. Believe and receive. Just receive his forgiveness through Christ. You receive him, you receive his forgiveness. I, I'm, a, I'm amazed that, that men, uh, people are so religious that they think they have to do something good or do good works or do something, uh, join a church or get baptized in order to be saved. <coughs> No, you get saved by receiving Christ into your heart as Amen. your Savior. Amen. Then after you get saved, you believe in Christ and receive Christ. Then you follow him and believe in baptism and get busy in his church. Amen. God's forgiveness is complete and final. I mean, he's the only one who can forgive. Nobody else can. There's no preacher, no pope, no uh, priest that can forgive sin. Oh, my goodness, I'd be wasting my time if I went somewhere today and stood in a booth and told this fellow everything that I'd ever done wrong. What good would he do? 
Uh, he puts his paints on the same way I do. Amen. He's just as human as I am. But now let me tell you, I can walk into the throne of God where Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And I can walk into his throne, spiritually speaking, and I can say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. And I can receive forgiveness. Oh my, how wonderful that is. When I got saved, I felt like a load had been lifted off of me. Amen. I, I remember the moon never shined as bright as it shined that night as I was walking home. And th there's something, it just, felt, it just felt like a load had been taken off of me. And a spiritual load had been taken off of me. All my sins had been taken away, had been washed away in the blood of Christ, and I had received God's forgiveness. I'm reminded of this story, and you've heard it probably. I had a man walking along years ago carrying a sack of potatoes on his back. And here comes his neighbor by with a horse and buggy or wagon. And he stops and invites his neighbor to sit on the wagon, and he'll take him home. And the guy's sitting there with a bag of potatoes still on his shoulder. And the man looks over at him and says, well, you can set those potatoes down. And the man said, well, I'm just so grateful that you've taken me home. I'll just carry the bag, uh, sack of potatoes. Ah, you don't carry anything. When you get through, you get that forgiveness, it's all wiped away. Amen. It's, it's all put aside. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm so thankful that we have a God like that. Cover. Not only forgiven, that word forgiven in verse 7 means to carry away. Lift up, carry away. And that's what happens when God forgives you. He picks it up and carries it away. And he never holds it against you again. And then verse 7, that word cover means to cover completely. To completely cover. It means to cover over completely, to obliterate where it can't be seen. I heard about, read about this preacher that wanted to paint his church building. It was white. And he only had one gallon of paint this years ago. And so he decided to paint it one Saturday. Beautiful day, sun shining. But he only had one gallon and he knew it wouldn't the whole, he couldn't do the whole church with just one gallon, so he began to thin it down. And he thinned the paint down, and then he painted the building. The story goes in that God sent a storm that night. I mean, about like we had last night, one of those gully washers. And he got to church the next morning, and all the paint had been washed off the church building. He goes to the Lord, and he said, God, I spent all day painting this building and you sent a rainstorm and washed all the paint off. Said, what, what, what am I going to do? And the story goes that God said, repaint and thin no more. You'll get it after a while. <laughs> It'll come to you after a while. <laughs> I heard about this pastor who doubted the salvation of a lady who had lived a terrible life. I mean, she had been a real, what you call a real sinner. And he asked her about her past life. And <coughs> the sin that she had committed. And she said, well, I asked God to save me and forgive me of my sin. And he, she said, just to make sure he had, I asked him, when was it, what was the last sin that I committed? And she said, and God told her, I don't remember. There's a lot of truth to that. I, I don't remember. God's got a good forgetter. He's good at forgetting. 
And I'm so thankful that he is. Isaiah 43, 25, I will not remember your sins anymore. Amen. Folks, uh, I, I mean, it's free. It, it's, it's free. All you have to do is ask for it. And if the Spirit of God speaks to your heart and shows you that you need forgiveness, that's all you need. If the Lord spoke to you and tells you you need it, then take it, ask for it, and receive it. Oh, my. Beautiful thing. And then verse 8, this, he will not impute sin to the man who receives his forgiveness. You know what impute means. To charge to an account. This computer we have, God's been familiar with that forever. And he used the word impute thousands of years before we had a computer. What do we do with a computer? We impute information into us. We put it inside of it. That's what God does. He will not impute sin to our lives anymore. He's not going to charge us with it when we receive him. His forgiveness is forever. He does not charge to our account our sin anymore. He charges our to our account, the righteousness of Christ. I read a lot about the preachers in the past. And Martin Luther, of course, founded the Lutheran Church. He got out of the Roman Catholic Church and founded the Lutheran Church. And he said one night he was dreaming and the devil came to him and he had a long list of every sin that he had ever committed. And he said he would in his dream, he was looking at all the <laughs> sins that he had committed, and he said the devil had the goods on him because he knew that every one of them he had committed, the time, the date, everything. And he said, you know, what could I say? Well, what could I do? But he said, I noticed at the end of the letter and all the charges against me that there was a signature and the bottom of that letter, it was signed, filled, fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Forgiven. Folks, I hope we realize today what real forgiveness really is. How good it is to be forgiven by the creator of the world. God who made us has the ability to forgive us Amen. and will forgive us if we ask him to. That's amazing. And it's all free. You don't have to work for it. You just have to receive it. Just ask him for it and he will give it to us. Colossians 2.14 This is what the Lord did for us. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Jesus nailed my sins to the cross. Amen. He took my sins. Now why in the world do I want to go to hell and spend eternity there paying for them when you've already been paid for? Amen. All I need to do is receive it. I mean, that's foolish of us, me or anybody, who would take a chance on paying for their sins forever when they had the opportunity on this side of eternity to receive that forgiveness and don't have to pay for it. Oh, thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you for his forgiveness. How marvelous and how good it is, the forgiveness of Almighty God. Would you stand with us?